guys, and welcome back to the What's the Crack podcast. I have my guest Ivy here today. Uh, I find her so interesting and so lovely, and I just want you guys to get to know her as I get to know her a little bit better because we know each other through the same social circle. Mutual friends. Mutual friends, that's the term I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've just, we've gotten to know each other a little bit at parties. Yeah. But never like one-to-one one-to-one chat yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. without alcohol being present except for you except for me yeah parties (laughs) and things so it's it's nice to have you on the show so thank you so much for coming down so how would you describe your presence online is is broad or as small as you want i mean it's all about the adult content (laughs) Yeah, so that's my presence. Yes, basically, because you have a spicy page. A spicy, yes. Yeah. Well, I think we can say it. It's an OnlyFans account. Oh, is this the only place we're allowed to say that? I think so, because okay. obviously TikTok. <laughs> uh, people, if you're not familiar with TikTok, you cannot say OnlyFans. You can't allude to it unless you're a massive celebrity, in which case they're fine. Double with it. standards. Yeah, which <laughs> always bothers me so hard because like there was a few people announcing it on tiktok that they'd started an of page yeah and their videos remained up because they were verified and they've got maybe like two million followers and tiktok are like oh sorry (laughs) can't see that yeah behind your blue tick (laughs) which we'll get into the the trials and tribulations of trying to be a spicy content worker yes on social media these days because i find it really really fascinating our friendship circle there's a lot of people who do that type of content i would actually say the majority of our friendship circle i was gonna say it's less common for someone not to do (laughs) it than it is for someone to actually make that kind of content um so i just want to ask you a few questions about that and just a free general questions because i i know a lot of people watching this won't be familiar with those kinds of platforms or so they say Uh, (laughs) who knows these days honestly because OnlyFans has become the i would say the predominant way it's it's the biggest paying platform i would say for that that industry oh for sure uh because you're never gonna you know you're never gonna fight the hub you know there's free free. content on there (laughs) people are very passionate about their free content yes which we unfortunately you must deal with on the daily yes so the thing about only fans is that you're essentially your own employer yeah you're you're your own boss you're your own manager there is no creepy old man behind a camera telling telling you what to do yes uh which the the other industry i don't want to say the p word but the p industry is very very famous for like people for sure yeah Yeah. people laying out their boundaries and saying i don't want to do these things these are the things i don't want to do and then turning up to a set and then being forced to do them yeah yeah but you don't have that one of the best things about it is that i'm my own boss if Mm -hmm. i don't feel comfortable with something i don't have to do it yeah and if i do then i can but there's no one to tell me what i do and don't have to do and also you can kind of build your own hours yeah so if you're oh, not yeah. in the mood which i imagine you have to be in the mood <laughs> most of the time to most make of the time yeah. that kind of content you can kind of say well i'll work later or i'll work tomorrow yeah so obviously it's great because if i've got a social engagement i can be like oh i'll work later i'll work tomorrow mm. i mean there are some times where with any job you have to work when you don't want to yeah <laughs> i couldn't just avoid working forever but no it's a lot nicer a lot nicer because oh, there's no no one giving you a schedule yeah but i can imagine it's hard to draw the line with a work day whenever there's no on and off switch for like dms because yeah. I understand people, people can kind of just message you with requests. Yeah, right. People at any time. will message me whenever, mm-hmm. and sometimes I'll have people message me like at three in the morning, yeah. and I'm asleep. Yeah, and because of time zones, they seem to forget that, and then they get demanding. Mm. I'm like I'm doing other stuff. I'm, I'm still a human. Yeah, and you don't have someone else running the business for you. No, so, exactly. There's no like customer support team. Yeah, there's there to nothing. be like Ivy's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she'll get back to you in this many hours. Yeah. So that's stressful. Um, and sometimes like I can get really carried away with work, and because I'm getting constant. That's messages, what I was thinking. Like, where can... do you draw the line to go? 
oh, it's eight o'clock. I'm going to get my pajamas on and watch a movie. It rarely happens. You know, mm. most of the time I can work like well into the evening, like just up until I go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. Um, it's just work. Just all day. Because it's constant. It doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things like if you're live tweeting, promoting your page or doing TikToks or whatever you're doing, then people are going to see that at different times as well. Yeah. And then it just means that throughout the day you're going to get like drip fed people coming into your and DMs. And they expect you to still be online. Yes. Like I'm eating right now, please. Yeah, you're being a human being. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question in regards to what kind of content you make because I don't, I'll, when it comes to my <laughs> friends and their spicy pages, as much as I would like love to just kind of support you guys, I... Like, it, it feels weird to... No, I get that feeling, even myself. Yeah. Like, knowing that they'd appreciate the support, but I'm like, but they're my friends. Yeah, my <laughs> friend, and then I, I might see something I, I shouldn't see. I don't want to see it. <laughs> and it's, it's a bit of, like, a, a, a weird line. Yeah. Um, but I, I just have the question of, like, is all of the content you make solo content, so it's just you... Or is it, is it like, do you collaborate with people? So the majority is of just me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have like male, female content with my partner. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't feature like anyone else. So I don't do collaborations with other content creators, okay, et cetera, yeah. because I'm in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people are okay with doing that and others yeah, aren't. Pers- and, yeah. So... So your partner <laughs> is going to hate me for this. I'm so sorry. I'm just so <laughs> fascinated. And I'm sure people watching are just as interested. So let's say his junk yeah. is in your videos. Yeah. His face isn't. Is not. So it's like he's an anonymous peen. Torso down. Okay. And he doesn't have social media. Okay. And he doesn't exist on the internet. Okay. So no one will know who he is so he's never gonna get fined he's probably just, not no yeah yeah he's no. just anonymous <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's fair i was just curious just like because i know yeah that a lot of people have like different lines where some people are like almost kind of in open relationships in the sense of when it comes to work work yeah so they'll go and collaborate with other creators and all that kind of stuff yeah it's like personal boundaries and mm-hmm. what you're comfortable with and that's not to say that in the future i might not collaborate with a woman for Mm. example because that's something i don't feature on my page Mm. but there would still be boundaries in place etc because at the end of the day although it's work it's still personal to people too yeah because it's kind of a job that affects your personal like your interpersonal relationship with your partner yeah um so your partner clearly must be very open-minded to all of this yes because and i think must be a great guy he is <laughs> he is i definitely think it t- it's 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 supportive to it let is. your partner yeah. make that kind of content well i got with him when i'd already started doing it so he kind of knew knew what he was getting into what he was getting into not to some degree he didn't realize his junk would be on the internet yeah, yeah. he was like point. i didn't know this <laughs> like i didn't sign up for this when i got with you yeah but um you know, it's it's something that he became more up in my yeah, doing. Yeah, later on down just the through line. learning and understanding. So I'm interested in what dating was like. <laughs> because there's that massive joke online where guys just they're like, Oh, you're the type of girl who has an OnlyFans page. Yes. I won't date a girl oh with an OnlyFans. God. As if girls with OnlyFans would date them anyway. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I'm not interested in you. <laughs> so <laughs> no offense it's always the crustiest dudes as well that yeah. are like i would never date a woman with an only fan like why do you think you're better than someone yes. why it's take a look in the mirror <laughs> it the mind boggles like I, I i believe that you can not date someone for their job yeah of course uh like <laughs> if your husband was like a nazi soldier <laughs> and you didn't want to well, date yeah, them exactly that's a-okay <laughs> uh you don't have to you can't just be like oh no i su- i love them so i support them at all their jobs yeah like no 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 i think it's unrealistic to expect that like not everybody's gonna be like some people wouldn't date me because i'm a musician yeah and your lifestyle is not what it, what they're, they're used to with, and yeah. like i've i've known people 
when I was dating that were like, I can't date you because you go on tour, which means you're obviously sleeping with people. Oh, I, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> babes, I'm in bed. As soon as I get to the hotel room, uh, there is no such thing as me I'm sleeping I'm way too around. tired yes. for any of that. Yeah, yeah, literally. But they think that because like, because at the time, whenever I was dating, um, this is before TikTok, so I had a predominantly male audience. Yeah. So they were like, you've got all these dudes in the audience that you're going to sleep with. And yeah. I'm like... Well, that's like a <sighs> misconception about people in relationships that yeah. do OnlyFans, mm-hmm. is that automatically you must be unfaithful to your partner because right, yeah. you've got so many people flooding your DMs all the time. Mm-hmm. That you're bound to get swayed by someone. It's what, like you're, someone's gonna send you a dick pic and you're gonna be like, "That's, that's the, the one." one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they really don't know how to get my attention anyway, so there's no yeah. hope. It's so. How did how was dating for you when you were single? Like, how did how did you navigate that world? Or like, do you have any awkward t- stories? <laughs> most people, when I was like trying the whole dating pool thing, were more mm. interested in being in the content with me oh wow and i was like i don't in a red flag way yeah in like an instant oh you do only fans let's sleep with each other and make content oh and i'm like uh, i was looking for a date but okay <laughs> i was kind of looking not to be working right now like yeah I, like, I just want to chill night off. <laughs> like i don't know you yeah i think it gives them like a kick to be like Oh, I'm going to oh, sleep with yeah. this girl and somebody else is going to watch Yeah, it. yeah. And I'm just not up for that. I'm like, I get it. It's my job, but I don't want to do my job with you. <laughs> it's kind of weird because in the, in the in, uh, it's a sentence I never thought would happen, but like it's fetishizing your job. Yeah. As... Well, f- they probably assume that like, you're really good in bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, that's the assumption because yeah. you do it for a living. And they're like, oh, you must be great at it. And I'm like, well... I don't even want to talk about that. I want to go and I, do you know what? get dinner. The lasagna's really nice, <laughs> isn't it? The lasagna's great. Like, can we stop talking yeah. about it? Because I could never imagine going on a... I would end a date so quick if a guy brought up uh, sex. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, my God. I wouldn't kiss someone on a first date. I can't say the same, but like I, I understand I have people it. on yeah. a first date, but I always like it's not the intention to do it. Whenever, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it happened naturally, it was fine. But like whenever I was on a date with a guy and they brought it up, mm. just something in me was like, Ooh. "You've got one thing on your mind." Yeah, yeah, it, very much so. And I, it just led me to be like, uh, "This is a no go." <laughs> yes. Like I just couldn't cope with it. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but I can't imagine then somebody like bringing up your job in that kind of way where they're like oh because you do this for a living that automatically means we're going to sleep with each other they suddenly don't see you as a human anymore it's Mm -hmm. like you're here for one thing because you do this job and Mm -hmm. i know that i can get it out of you supposedly because have you found it like when you did say no what was the reactions like if you if you were on a date with somebody yeah and then say you just like kissed them and left what was the reaction like They'd probably just ignore me. I'd get like ghosted. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> dating is brutal. They'd be like, anyway. "Oh damn it, she's not giving me what I want." <sighs> Thought she'd be an easy target. Well, because like, you get that mm. anyway, no matter what your job. Because I've had it. Yeah. Where it's like, if I've like, you know, even kissed them and then nothing else, or they're trying to like come back to my place, and I'm like, no, 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 no I'm good. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, they get kind of like toddlers sometimes. Dating's just not fun, especially through dating apps. Yeah, but I had it with women as well. Whereas when I didn't like really? let them come back to my place, they got a bit. Angsty. See, I didn't. My best dates were with women. So, but I, I agree. But like, I still had some women that were like really pushy on like the come back to my place kind of vibe, mm. and I was a bit like, this isn't what I want. Because <laughs> I went on a date with a girl where I literally ended up back at her place that night. And I learned my lesson so hard never to do that again. Mm -hmm. Because I naively went into it thinking, oh, no, she'll be fine. She'll, like, respect my boundary of, like, I will come back and watch a movie with you. And that's fine. And that's not how it went. (laughs) I was so naive because I thought, I don't know, that that you'd be listened to because it's a woman. Yeah, it's like, surely I'll be safer around a woman because they know what it's like. Yeah, but no. It just goes to show that it doesn't matter. Well, she was a sex addict. Okay. Did you know that before no. you went? 
Did I know that? No. <laughs> I was Did gonna she say. know that? No. It wasn't until I pointed it out to her on like our third date and I sent her because I'm Janet. I like to send people to meetings apparently. <laughs> I sent her to a sex and love anonymous meeting and she came out of it and she was like, yeah, yeah you were right. <laughs> yeah, I am. And I need to work on myself. So she went away and she worked on herself. It was crazy. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> My dating stories, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a guy. It still it doesn't. It's still mental. It's just a messy day. Yeah. But I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I really am. I don't miss dating whatsoever. <sighs> it's awful. And I think it's just gotten worse. Yeah. Like, oh, it really has. It was pretty... I think when I was on the dating scene a lot on apps, I was very public about being on apps. I didn't mind people knowing, no, I don't talk about my dating life and I don't yeah. talk about if I was on an app or anything like that because I just, you know, boundaries and all that kind of stuff with mental health. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I remember was uh, the worst part about being on the dating scene was the ghosting phenomenon. Yeah. Because that was really big in like 2017, 2018. It was. Yeah. It was normal to go on a few dates with somebody and, and then just, just not message never them message them again. Yeah. So I remember that. and I, I mean, I don't think I'm completely innocent. Have you ghosted? I've ghosted. I think I've done it a few times. Yeah, I did it once and learned my lesson. When you get the ick <sighs> and you're like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. What do I do? And it's and so tough though, because it's like, you have to, le- you have to learn, you, everyone I think has ghosted somebody at some point. Yeah. If I you've think been on everyone has their reasons for ghosting. You yeah. know, I did it because I was not in a right headspace and I was like, I'm going to go on a date. And mm. now I am don't ever want to do that again. Yeah. And I just don't care, so I'm going to ignore them. Oh, it's so rough because I've been and ghosted. And I feel so bad. Have you been ghosted? <laughs> yeah. Like, often? Yeah. It's the worst feeling. It's horrible. I'm like, I have, I'm an awful person. What have I done? What have I said? What have I embarrassed I myself? Yeah. I'm annoying. It, <laughs> it's really bad if you've got any mental health issues and someone yes. ghosts you. Yeah, because the, the, you automatically are just the worst person it's in the world. It's suddenly your fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter the reason they did it. They hate me. They I never go on me. a date again. Yeah. And now all my friends hate me too. Yeah. Oh, it's so <laughs> awful. I just I don't I don't know. I've just gotten weird with like meeting people from the internet. I got really wigged out about me like I don't know. I've I I started listening to way too much true crime. <laughs> The amount of people that have been murdered now of dating apps. Did you ever watch the Tinder swindler? No, I haven't watched it yet. Oh my gosh. See, I, I know about it. Mad. But like, he didn't kill people. No. But he did. He and I'm stole dumb. a lot of money. Yeah, and I'm pretty stupid. Yeah. Like, I hold my hands up and admit I'm a bit of an idiot and I can be <sighs> totally, like, led on. I would have been a victim of the Tinder You would have been. Even though I'm broke. <laughs> you still would have got into debt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would have somehow managed to get into debt mm-hmm. for a mediocre looking man. I don't think he was even mediocre, to be fair. I don't even know what he looks like. I'm just, <laughs> just I'm guessing. just assuming he's a mediocre looking man. Yeah, not my cup of tea. But It's so bad, but people were victimized, victim blaming the girls in that I show. I know. They're like, dumb them. They got- well, they thought they were, they were like manipulated into thinking that this person... Was, was what he was saying, what he was. In a really dangerous situation. Yeah. And they would do anything to help him. Yeah. And it starts off small and it just snowballs. <sighs> oh my God. The amount of money some of those women lost. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot for a stupid man. I can't say anything because, like, I'm so dumb I'd get in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Would. I would, yeah. I would so, I'm so easily led. You'd join a cult and not even realise I wouldn't realise. And then you'd be like, oh, I guess this is my life now. Yeah. I'm in a cult. Yeah. <laughs> Honest to God. I would just be like, oh, look at me. I'm a part of this lovely community. Look at this nice little group. Yeah. Aren't they all fun? I would just automatically start being like, oh, yeah, I'm, just this, I'm living a better life than everyone. <laughs> like, 
times are good. Yeah, people literally. around me are great. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm. No. Mm, it's not my thing. So I took, <laughs> I took a deep dive into Ivy content today. Yes, I already knew about the kind of content that you made, uh, but I thought I would have a have a snoop <laughs> and see if there was anything on there that I wanted to bring up. But there is a very clear common theme. Of course there is. In your content. Of course there is. That's what gains attention. Mm -hmm. You got to put out there what the people want. Yeah. And what do the people want? The people want pegging. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't really know how to explain pegging in a, in a YouTube friendly way. I suppose mm. you could say the term strap on. Is that safe? I think it is. So that's it. I think if you know what that is, you're old enough to watch this video. Yeah. If not, you should have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, I should have. There should be a warning in the description. This is not... For, I don't think children will follow me. It's fine. Fair enough. Okay. Like, so, I'm not that kind of creator. Uh, someone without a peen mm -hmm. wears a strap on. Mm -hmm. And you do the doing. You do the doing. Yeah. Which is you. Yeah, which is me. Okay. Um, to a man <laughs> and is this in your real life as well as your online content yes but it only started being a part of my real life when i found out about it through my online content <laughs> okay so i didn't i never thought like oh i'd like this you're like no. i'm the, i don't think that's for me i don't think so yeah and people were on about it all the time online so we're like people in your dms asking for that type of yeah content? okay yeah that's how i got into the whole dominatrix style content yes yeah, people were asking for it because you are what they call a dom yes which is just short for dominant yes um so you are a strong independent woman yes and i like to make men cry yes okay so this is <laughs> this is the thing so it's it seems to be kind of like a degrading thing yeah and a <sighs> that's what they like yes, uh, who being... am i to question it <laughs> yes so you're there is a need and you're fulfilling it yeah exactly but you never thought this is something you're into so people started asking for it yeah you started giving them the content yeah i was like well why not try bits here and there see if i like it and i was like actually this is kind of cool let's do more of this content mm -hmm. and then you just art imitates life yeah <laughs> yeah i'd say my life is not as full-on as it is in my content yes i could imagine but it doesn't mean it's not an aspect of it okay because i know that i i know quite a few people that online they say they like certain things and yeah. then in their personal life they're like would never <laughs> yeah i mean i'm which i think is fair enough yeah i'm very similar in the sense that like a lot of things that i do and feel comfortable with doing with my online content mm. i wouldn't feel comfortable doing in when the cameras are up yeah yeah in your personal life yeah but there's there's aspects of it that i continue to do because it's you try in your blood and you find out and yeah it's, it's like you're a guy who's got a foot fetish who's seen a foot for the first time and you're like it makes mm, sense yeah this, i get it I, it all makes sense to me now <laughs> which i have another question about just yes. speaking of feet yes do you get people because i get people asking for feet yeah every day every day every day wow i have ugly feet but Some i have of them got like it. a 4.7 on wiki feet your feet are on wiki feet yeah. oh my god <laughs> you should be selling this stop letting them have it for free i know right anytime i've looked back because i didn't know i was on wiki feet but ever since discovering i was on wiki feet i'm so mad i'm like yeah uh, i would be this too. should be behind a paywall <laughs> like my butt ass ugly feet should be behind a paywall like they're not nice but people apparently are into that yeah the, the more like, characterful your feet are. Yeah, well, I sell stuff. So people would buy, like, socks and... Oh, wow. Items of clothing. Have you ever sold shoes? No. The weirdest thing I ever sold, I broke my retainer when I had braces. Okay. So I had one of the plastic ones you put in after. Yeah. It broke and someone paid for it. Wow. And they've got my saliva-filled retainer somewhere. Yeah. I... 
again, who am I to question it? These people exist, though. Yeah. And, like, I'm not mad about it. Like Everyone has their thing. Everyone has their thing. I think a lot of people... Because the numbers don't add up with the amount of people that are really angry about um, corn on the internet and... Uh, all of the things that are sexual in nature. There's a lot of people that get really mad about that stuff being online. But yes. there is a huge audience for it. Yeah. The audience for it is a lot bigger. And this is what I find baffling. So there's obviously a lot of people out there that are like, this is so wrong. You should not be doing this, but are clearly indulging in it privately. Yes. And it's a shame thing, I think. I mean, obviously yeah. there are some people who are adamant that it's the worst thing ever to exist in the world. Yeah. And Even they though truly it's like believe the that. oldest yeah. job in the world. Yeah, prostitution was the first ever like job however many years ago. Yeah. Um, but there's the issue that there's either people hate it because it's a woman making money for herself. Mm-hmm. So they'd indulge in it when women don't have that control of it. That's something that I find disgusting is that um, people who get really mad at the likes of OnlyFans existing but are totally happy when celebrities' photos get leaked. Yeah, but that's because they don't like the consent. Yes, it's like they don't like the ownership. Yeah. Once a woman owns what she's doing and takes it on as a job, they don't like it. Yeah. And that freaks me out. The world is a scary place. (laughs) I still live in fear that my... My photos will get leaked someday. Because <laughs> I was I was young and naive at one point, and I may or may not have sent inappropriate pictures to people. Was your that face I was in them? No. Right. But, but then I've been in long term relationships where my face was in them. Mm. But the, I always had a rule. Yes. That I would make sure before I sent the photo, would I be happy waking up to that photo on the front of the Daily Mail? Yeah, so that's my attitude. People are like, well, what happens if your content get leaks? And one, it's illegal if you do it. Yeah. Like, it's, a lot can happen Yeah, to it's you. against the law. It's copyright. It's also classed as revenge Keyword, porn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's taking someone's images and sharing them without their consent. Mm-hmm. And third, I'm like, I take pride in these photos and videos, so... If you're going to see it, you're going to see it. I don't care. Yeah. Like, at least I look good. <laughs> yeah, you've made sure you're like... You've obviously made sure because yeah, people are digesting yeah, that content. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, no, I'm happy with this. Yeah. I'm proud of this. I'm going to put it out there. Has if- any of your stuff got leaked? Because I see it happening to creators all the time. Yeah, it happens all the time. I'm really fortunate that it hasn't oh, amazing. yet. Yeah. Um, Which I'm surprised about. Because... Is, but it's great. I have so many different platforms on social media Mm -hmm. and so many different followings that I'm surprised no one has leaked anything yet but Mm. I'm very grateful and like I said I will find you I will find you and I will will kill kill you you. (laughs) (laughs) oh like that would that would be a fear I think of like I would just be annoyed if I had an OnlyFans and my content was being leaked for free. Yeah, I'd be more annoyed than anything. Yeah, because it's, it's like, like this is how I pay my rent. Yeah, you people see it and they think, oh, like I'm gonna leak this. What's the worst it's gonna do? Like these people make loads of money, but realistically, unless you're in like the top, top, top percentage, you're not making loads of money Mm. there's obviously potential to make a lot of money yeah and i'm not going to act like i'm hard done by yeah yeah, yeah. but that money pays my bills it you know keeps so i can feed myself so i can heat my house it's not like i'm a millionaire and i'm not going to notice the lack of money (laughs) Yeah, yeah yeah so to leak it and think that there's no consequence to someone is just stupid yeah well, I've <laughs> I haven't told this story yet, mm. but I did get my nudes leaked once. Oh, yeah, not on the Daily Mail though. Not on the Daily <laughs> Mail. So I've never spoken about it because I wanted to make sure there was enough time between the incident happening and and now. Yes, and uh, enough time has gone by. But basically, I used to have an Instagram for whenever I got my girls done. Yes, that I would follow all these girls who were also getting their schmitties done. 
and everyone would post photos and just like for progress for like because whenever you're getting them done it's not there's nothing sexual about it whatsoever no you're no, literally no, no. looking at them like you're looking at boobs and you're going 400 cc 500 cc it's all numbers and it's yeah. all math and yeah. it doesn't matter anymore so i would post photos on there everything nothing with the nip because it was instagram of course but still the girls were on yes. show right and i woke up one day to a bunch of dms on that private page from people letting me know that my photos had now made it onto a Reddit page. Oh, Reddit. The oh, one and only. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. So basically someone's partner had gotten really, really angry at them, but I'd managed to like log into their account. Oh, had my. access to their private, you know, breast augmentation account, took screenshots of everybody they followed's photos. I think like six of my photos ended up on this no. Reddit thread. So they just did a massive thread dump of it's like, here you go. Yeah, here's all of these girls getting their girls done and you can see them. <sighs> yeah. It's low, isn't it? It was really low. So I'm <laughs> uh, the fear of God when yeah. I opened the Reddit page and seen my breasticles. Yeah. There was pretty rough. Was I can imagine. Pretty rough. I was it's like, is this going to ruin my career? <laughs> Well, the thing was, all it would have taken was for one person to recognize one of my tattoos. Yeah, that's another thing. If you've got... No one has stupid tattoos like me. <laughs> like, they're so dumb and so badly placed that it could only be on yeah. my body. Yeah. Uh, so luckily, no one recognized. But I made a complaint to Reddit, obviously being like, hey... I didn't post this. This the... is not meant to be here. This is kind of illegal. <laughs> um, And they were like, sorry, we have we see no problem with the complaint. Yeah, oh my gosh. And I was like what i've just told you they're mine <laughs> yeah i've literally just let you know that somebody shared a photo of mine that is explicit that is not consensual and they did social media it. doesn't look into things like this so no they see a report and they're like yeah no it's fine automated reply yeah and it was awful luckily i think enough people reported the entire thread as a whole that it got taken that it got down. taken down yeah but my individual request to remove like these six photos of my girls Nothing. was denied yeah i was like what if this was like revenge p word they wouldn't care they unless care. you get enough reports to yeah. take it down but like who as a regular joe has got enough of a following to make a because there was hundreds of women affected by this thing yeah so there was a hundred people getting really angry or like enough people in the community to get angry to like pull it down yeah but like if you're just a regular schmegular person who wants to go online on their personal facebook and be like hey guys hi by the way this brian shared my nudes can you please report this (laughs) but also have a look at my schmeddies while you're there yeah you have to it's not like something you know i've had like fake accounts made of me and stuff and i'm Mm. like can you go and report this they're stealing my content of just like stuff i posted on instagram yeah and people are like yeah cool but it's nothing they haven't seen before yeah if you're like trafficking people to look at your your yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a different matter yeah so i can't imagine how that would even feel and reddit is so bad for it reddit's a scary place i've i don't understand reddit i've heard it's really good for like i like it for drama promoting i like it for like am i the asshole and stuff yeah threads like that yeah but i know it's good yeah for creators too but i don't understand it so it doesn't yeah. help me whatsoever <laughs> it really doesn't i think it's one of those things where it's like you have to take a proper deep dive into it yes to then find your niches because reddit is niche driven for sure so i mean the only good thing is that i have my niche and you got it <laughs> so i just need to find the subreddits that match literally you need you need i i can't give you advice on how to do your job no but i, I think pegging reddit is probably where you i've belong. heard it's big i posted a little bit on there oh, it okay. seems to have done well but i don't think i understand it fully yeah i don't get it no i don't understand i want to understand but i just listen to people read content from there i don't actually yeah, delve that's into fair it enough but i can't even imagine what pegging reddit's like i feel safer on tiktok yeah in regards to the people on there. Yeah. I mean, you still get some horrible people. 
I noticed you've had to do a lot of clapbacks on your TikTok. Oh, it's my favorite thing to do. Oh, it's as great. much as I hate the com, well, I don't even hate the comments anymore. I'm bored of them. They're all the same. Yeah. It's like if you're gonna give me some hate, at least mix it up a little bit. Be creative. I'm used to this by now, yeah. but I just find it funny because it makes my videos get more tension when I'm having an argument with somebody, and I'm really yeah. not affected by it. And I'm like, cool. And then people are like, well, you're replying, so you must be really butthurt by it. No. You're like, no, it's free content. No, it's really good for content. Yeah. I can't, I'd have no ideas what to make otherwise. It's just so easy because I make hate videos on YouTube. Yeah. And I just find that stuff so simple because like I get a hate comment now and I respond naturally positively to it because I'm like, oh, free content. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't like, see a hate oh comment. Oh my God, go, oh. I have an idea for content to yeah. make now. It's like reverse wiring. Yeah. I get excited when I see a hate comment. People now. get really annoyed that you don't get upset by it too, which makes it even better. Uh, yeah. I kept, <laughs> like, the old hate I used to get on TikTok was always really weirdly specific. Yeah? Yeah. And I just, it never bothered me. No. Like, I just, yeah. It was always just on s just certain aspects of me. And I was just like, I really, really don't cool. care. Cool. Also, you're fighting with someone who hates themselves. So, like, shut up. You can't hate me more than I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> My voice is louder than your voice. So, <laughs> shut up. But it's always really funny when they bring up stuff that maybe used to be an insecurity. Yeah. And I'm like, eh. That You're way. late to the party. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, recovered that trauma, actually. I'm sorry. That would have got that me was good so though. last year. <laughs> Literally. Literally. <laughs> so how, how do you find, like, because <laughs> TikTok, child-friendly oh. platform. <sighs> it's a tough one. It but is. But it's not child-friendly. Well, it's not. Whatsoever. I mean, first off, you have to be a teenager to use yes it. it's not like you've got six-year-old seven-year-old i mean if does anyone even have a phone that age i don't know i hope not i really hope not but you because as soon as you give a child a device yeah you just have to expect that they're saying the worst because they are yeah but um i think that there is a responsibility if your child has a phone mm -hmm. to be aware of what they're consuming yeah because in every terms platform of the internet it. It doesn't matter where you are on the internet. Like, you will find something. Yeah. And it's not about taking all this stuff down and making it impossible to find. It's about making it so that it's age limited. So mm. YouTube have made a thing where you have to, like, use your ID to oh. watch videos that are for... Older people. Yeah. 18 plus people, which I think is a good idea. They were going to bring that in in the UK. Yeah. They Where? have. Oh, only have on they? only on my phone. I don't know why. Yeah. So if I do it on my laptop, it doesn't work. Because I definitely remember it being a thing where like you had to, they were trying to make it so that you had to go to like the corner shop to get like this code. Oh, that's way too complicated. Yeah, but they made it so that you would have this code that only then you could access adult content online. And uh. like, you didn't have to get it from the shop. You could just send in a photo of your ID and yeah. all this kind of yeah. stuff. And I was like, I get it, but... As somebody who was a child on the internet, mm -hmm. who saw some really grim things at like 14 oh, years yeah. old. Yeah, I've I seen stuff I knew. We've all been there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, did it negatively affect me? I'm probably the worst person to look at because I have mental health issues. But like, I don't think the internet did that to me though. No, either do it I. It really didn't. Cause... I think it would have happened anyway. I think, yeah, with mental health, I think if you're predisposed to be a certain way, I don't think watching a beheading video is going to make you worse. I don't think Two Girls, One Cup gave me depression. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Two Girls, One Cup gave me anxiety. <laughs> it did give me anxiety. There we go. But temporary anxiety. It wasn't yeah. the cause of my no. life anxiety. <laughs> oh, Two Girls, One Cup. That's, oh. That was a time to be alive. But I feel like... You know, I don't think you should expose children to hardcore no. things at all. And that's why I don't think they should be allowed on a phone. Yeah, exactly. Like, I genuinely don't. Like, I don't. And I don't agree with people saying that TikTok is a child's platform. Because why, Dave, are you 50-year-olds? Why are you on, on a child's platform? Because that's even weirder. Yeah. Because people saying it's a child's platform that aren't children it's on like, it. Well, you're on it. So what are you looking are at? Are you on looking here? for kids? Yeah. My guy, Dave, are you looking Creepy. for children? <laughs> it's pretty weird. Uh, I think, no, I think universally everyone has accepted that TikTok is not just a child only app. Yeah. It's international now. Maybe when it was musically, 
Maybe Maybe then okay. yeah. it was a child yeah. only app. Because... TikTok is so diverse now. There's yeah. so much on there. But that's why people go on there. Cause... But TikTok is so Straight. quick to say you you as a woman cannot show this part of your body because mm-hmm. it's adult nudity or yeah. sexual exploitation or whatever. I mean, I got my account banned. I've had five accounts banned. <laughs> Okay, I'm, you're pretty, winning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my next one's gonna go so if you ask for my socials at the end we're not even gonna bother it's gonna oh, be gone in a week <laughs> no. but um i will attach your socials in the, the description so if you are if you are curious yes you can go give her a follow yeah um but it's the double standards so yeah you can see like topless men and i once there was this one guy who was being like pretending to wrap his belt around someone's neck and be all like sexual and i was like one that's really dangerous don't do that yeah and two it's this man is being extremely sexual on tiktok yeah like worse he's being horny on me so i made a (laughs) stitch and i was like this is bad and my video got taken down for harassment and bullying probably yeah no for adult nudity Lol. And I was like, well, are you going to take the original down? And the amount of, like, topless men and... Oh, it's fine. Stuff like guys. that. And they're all flexing. And I'm like, I don't have a problem. Mm. Go ahead. But when I'm getting attacked for showing nothing, yeah, then there's a problem. My issue was I showed a bit of cleave. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry that you're a woman. I know. I'm sorry that just in case you have children, you've got... Something some there. memories, my dude. Yeah, yeah, it's so unfortunate. Your I mean, muscle. I paid for mine, so it's a bit of a <laughs> yeah. different story. But I feel more so for women who have natural tiggle biddies. Yeah, and have to try and navigate creating content on an app like TikTok, where if you show a bit of cleavage, they're like, uh, uh, uh. it's impossible. But even Instagram is bad as yeah. well. I posted a video, uh, not even a video. I posted a story, and I'm, it's just got my feet in it, and I covered mm. them up with like a a sign because thing. paywall yeah <laughs> it got taken down are you serious i was like it's my feet what is adult about this my i'm feet. i'm clothed it's my feet like are you okay that's weird but it's it's to the point where spicy workers are getting targeted for everything yeah like not even naughty content it's just you post anything it's like you're on a hit list. Yeah. As soon as you're in any way affiliated with adult content. You're gone. You're out. Because I've I've posted some risque stuff on my Instagram back in the day. Well, I posted risque stuff on my personal account, like back in the day when mm-hmm. I before I had an OF. And yeah. that account has never been touched. Yeah. I posted the same picture on that account and my work one. Yes, and the and work it, one got the work one, the account got deleted. And I was like, now you're just attacking the job. Yeah. It seems it's like this is personal now. Yeah. It really is. Just I don't I don't know. I I don't understand it. And I again I think it only targets smaller creators. Yes. Because big creators, famous people with OnlyFans, push that line. Like I'm sorry. They Britney can Spears, have the link. I will die for you. I will lay down my life for you, Britney Spears. <laughs> we but love half Britney. of the stuff you're posting on your Instagram belongs on an OnlyFans page. <laughs> Make some more money from it. Get Do it. that bag. <laughs> but there's stuff that she's posting that I'm like, if a sex worker posted that, yes. their account would be deleted. Yeah, in with a second. no comebacks. But that's because celebrity celebrities bring people to the platform. Yeah, like I, like I get it, but also I don't like it. It's the double standards forever and always. Because I even see it in the music industry, mm. where the likes of YouTube. If yeah. I do a music video and I decide I'm gonna get a bunch of girls to shake their butts, and that's gonna be the whole music video. And Beautiful, I, just what we want to yeah, see. Yeah, and I'm gonna drink and I'm gonna smoke in this video. It's a okay. YouTube are like, that's cool, it's music. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> the minute uh, like a smaller creator who's not making music mm-hmm. posts anything similar, yeah. just anything remotely Or not even like 
close, just like a little aspect of yeah. what you've done. Absolutely smited. Gone. Yeah. You are deleted from the platform so quick yeah. you can't even blink. It's like a VIP pass to just post whatever you want. Quite literally. Because again, love Megan the Stallion. Would yes. again lay down my life for that woman. <laughs> love her so much. <laughs> She's like always one of my top artists of the year, which is so surprising. I make folk music, but I love Megan It the doesn't Stallion. matter. And her music videos are on the YouTube. Questionable. There are some questionable videos on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it just... I always just feel like it blurs the line of like as soon as you're in any way celebrity mm-hmm. they're like this is fine yeah but god forbid if you're one of the people who is celebrity for their only fans yeah or their adult content that life is even worse you can't go on any social media platform without getting smited yeah because you're famous for that yeah because I've, I've seen that a few I've times. I've seen it happen with a few people. Yeah. They're just like shunned from everything. Yeah. It's like, you're not allowed to exist on the internet because you make adult content and you're famously, you're famous for it. Which is not, and it's all about let's protect the children. But that's not yeah. what they're even doing. That's not, that's not what they're doing. I don't understand. <laughs> I, d- I d- yeah, they're not they're not allowed on social media platforms because yeah, people take this like think of the kids, and you're like, there's they're probably just posting appropriate content for that platform because you have yeah. to follow the rules on every platform. Yeah, but for but it's some not even easy not to find the kind of content that like I post, for example. You have to there's you have to jump through hoops, go through a lot. You ha- it's a process yeah. to get to that point. Because I think the way people act is if like you can openly promote your adult content online. You can't. Yeah. You have to talk in code. Yeah. Then you have to like You can't even use emojis anymore. You can't even use emojis and then you have to send them to out- external links, which now they've gotten smart and they know the external links and they know what you're posting and Well, like- I think I'm gonna have to change mine because I'm sure that's having an effect. Yeah, because like they they, they now look at your link tree yeah. and what you're posting in your link and tree. Like, hang like- on a second. Yeah. So So it it's not easy to take to cross pollinate your audience. No, from whatever social media you're you're promoting, it's impossible to promote. It takes a long time. Yeah, it really does. But the way that people act online is is if it's super easy to access. It's not. It's not. And then I think of like so my sister's what fifteen now. If I've got that wrong, I feel really bad. It's okay. But she's fifteen and she's on TikTok. Mm-hmm. You know, she had it long before I did. Yeah, <laughs> and she's just on like gaming and tiktok dances and well, stuff like that you get what you put out yeah. on so the likes of tiktok to for her to find me on tiktok would be like near impossible she would unless she's looking digging. for it and even then you she gotta be looking, looking for, for it. it you have to look for it because like everyone's algorithms are so different yeah so so different that you it's kind of like when people used to complain about the ads they were getting yeah they're like why am i getting so much like uh <laughs> gay p word ads and it's like mm. do you let me explain cookies to you my guy <laughs> <laughs> because this is what's happening. It's your own fault. It's your it own fault. Is. Which is, it's the funniest concept to me. It's it's the same thing. It's like, this showed up on my For You page. And it's yeah. Like, well, clearly People are like, something. why am I on this side of TikTok? I'm like, well, you had to come from somewhere. Yeah, you've liked Stop a video. Stop lying to yourself. Somewhere along the line. If this is the first one, I understand. If like, if you get a video. Sometimes you get a really random video come up yeah. and you're like, oh, what the hell? It's got like three likes. and Mine's the- has always been the things that TikTok have tested me on has been uh, baby dolls, like living baby doll things. You know, like the dolls yes. that are hyper-realistic. That I don't like those. That look like real they creep me children. Out. You, they're not YouTube. TikTok have tried shoving me into that community. Mine is, you know, as like a kid, you get the toy food that's got Velcro in the middle and you can like cut it. It's yeah. like wooden. Yeah. And people like make fake food with it they have like a fake restaurant and isn't that like the stop motion stuff. videos no oh so someone's like can i have a pizza with orange squash mm. and they like pop this little thing down and it's like fake orange squash yeah and then they stick the mushrooms on 
the internet's so weird. I find it quite interesting. That it's quite fascinating. It really is. It's kind of like another form of ASMR. Which we were talking about before we were, the show. We were. Uh... <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> I'm I don't really care what sorry. I used to hate it. I, I used, used to, to think it was so weird. Yeah, I used to think it was because TikTok was the thing that opened my mind to it. Whenever right. I landed on someone's live stream and they were doing ASMR on the live stream, TikTok live streams are weird. Oh, they are. They always are. But like that got me into ASMR. But ASMR before that, I was like, There's something weird about this. There's something so yeah. strange about this. Is this sexual? Um, and for some people, it, it is. might be, yeah. And but I think ninety percent of the community, it's very relaxing. Like it's very calming for anxiety. Yeah. And so that's how I got problems. back into it. it. Was like I was having anxiety attacks. Yeah. And I was like, I'll try anything. <laughs> So I fell down ASMR rabbit holes where like, it was like, um, bitchy classmate plays with your hair. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how did I get here? It's so beautiful. But... Like, it's so good, but I, I don't know how I've ended up on this side of the internet. And then Trisha Paytas. Everywhere. Everywhere she is everywhere. ASMR. She started an ASMR YouTube channel. Did she? Yeah. She's got a lot of YouTube channels. She does. But she's. So I'm anywhere on the internet, and suddenly Trisha Paytas. You can't go anywhere. She is there without Trisha Paytas. She being is there. always watching. <laughs> she's always there. I can't. I don't have enough time to explain to people who Trisha Paytas is. <laughs> she is a cornerstone of the internet. She has been posting on YouTube for like 15 years, probably longer probably, than I've been alive. <laughs> yeah, probably longer than that. And she's just. If you're bored and you are into people being memes search her and fall down a rabbit hole you will find everything you could ever need yeah that's <laughs> that's a rabbit hole for you guys but yeah so she got into asmr recently and it's it's wearing me out to be honest i haven't watched any of her stuff but she's been doing it long before it was popular really mm. that surprises me yeah like she's been into it for a very long time she was one of the first people to kind of make it normal it is normal. It is normal now. It's wonderful. But for a long time, it, it was... It wasn't. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, why is this tapping making me feel funny? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I still... I listen to it now every night. Which is a step up for me because it used to be true crime. I, can't, I love true crime, though. I do. I'll sit and I'll eat my, I eat my dinner. But my housemate was taking crime. the mick out of me. Why? Because they're like... You're going to bed every night hearing about serial killers and murderers and R wordists. And to be fair, I convinced myself that, like, if I was going to go anywhere, like, absolutely anywhere, just go out, yeah. I'd be the victim of a random attack. Do you, th- do you think you've listened to that much true crime? Yeah. I'm like, this is it. I You're am like, going to die. I am the main character. I am the main character. <laughs> I'm so important. <laughs> I will die. <laughs> yeah. They're going to choose me. It's me. That's the thing in my life that I'm like, I used to be worried about when I used to, I used to be really skinny. I used to be easily picked up. And my friends used to joke all the time that I'm the most kidnappable friend. True. But... And now that I'm older and, and, you know, a bit harder to pick up, I'm like, ah, it's I'm fine. fine. <laughs> I'll be fine. Dark alley at nighttime. Sure thing. I went through a phase of that. I was like, I am unstoppable. Isn't that called teenagehood, you know, in your teenage years where you think you're probably, yeah. You're like, I'm untouchable. And I was like, nothing's going to hurt me. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Like, I could jump off this and I'll be fine. Uh, If I walk down this road, I'm cool. I'm good. I think I have it naively. I think I do have an element of like, I'll be fine. Yeah. Whereas I shouldn't. (laughs) You just, you probably shouldn't. I'm the same. I'm like, everyone's really nice. That's, yeah, because I've had, um, majoritively in my life, I've only had good experiences with people. So then I'm like, well, no one's going to hurt me. But I will still get freaked out if a guy is behind me at nighttime. Oh, yeah, keys in hand. I'm like, "Uh yeah, oh, it's so bad. It's stressful. It is stressful. It is stressful, especially if, like, you're coming back from a party or something. Yeah. You're like, I'm dressed I'm dressed the way they tell you not to dress. That's just me every day. (laughs) Seriously, I'm all right in the daylight. The moment it goes dark, I'm like, "This is I gotta it. go. This is the one. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna die." 
It's like, I look like a whore. <laughs> I, I'm prime target. I know it's nothing to do. It's nothing to do It's with. nothing to do with how you dress, by the way. It's nothing. Like, how a woman dresses does not depict that she is going to be the victim of an attack and it shouldn't be. But it's like... But you, when people you do feel a bit more about, like a target whenever yeah. you're in a skirt. Yeah, it's like I'm an easier target in yeah. a way. Well, also because it's a bit harder to run in a skirt. I always think about what shoes I'm wearing. Same. Always. I'm like, can I run in these shoes? Yeah. No, I can't. So I can't wear them tonight because I'm going to be out late. Yeah. That's why usually like if I'm, I wear platform heels if I'm like, I'll be home before sunset. Yeah. But if not, like it's just the daytime. Trainers. Big old shoes. Yeah. Mm. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> the so, things we think about, hey? I know, right? Being a woman's great. So much privilege. <laughs> um, There are a few questions that I have. Yes. In regards to... So we talked about before the show, your parents, you have a great relationship with your parents. I shouldn't do. Well, you can't have this job unless you have a really bad relationship with your parents. Specifically your father. Yeah. It's always the father. And then if I say I've got a good relationship with my dad, they're like, oh, you must be sleeping with him. And I'm like, are oh, you okay? Seriously? Yeah. They're like, well, now you're too close with your dad. I'm like, oh my God. Pick a lane. Jeez. Can't like, have anything. Can't have anything good. <laughs> Cause you've got, so you have a good relationship with your parents. Yeah, a really good one. Yeah. And yeah. you, there was obviously a day that you had to sit your parents down and be like, mom, Dad, I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> it was more, they were confused at the amount of lingerie that was turning up at my house. So um, you were doing it before you told them? So I still lived with them. Okay. And I started it. And um, my mum walked in on me a couple of times, like tripod, and I'd just like jump the dressing gown over me. And I think she was a bit confused. She was like, whatever. She yeah. didn't ask. Um, and then I, they, they never asked. They never brought it up. Yeah. Um, and I went to leave my retail job last August to do OF full time. Mm-hmm. And it was just before that that I was like, I don't want you to think that I'm not working if mm. I decide to leave. So... I'm kind of doing this thing. Yes. <laughs> and my mom was like, oh, cool. When are you going to buy me a kitchen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, I have high hopes now. Yeah. yeah. That's where the money is, I darling. I was like, um, what? <laughs> so she was pretty chill. Yeah, they both of them were, you know. My dad was extremely supportive. He was like, if anyone asks what you do, I just tell them I'm not ashamed of it or anything. I'm like, oh, oh. That's really um, sweet. So it's really nice. And then yeah i kind of had to tell them i didn't want them to think i was like becoming really mentally ill again and i was just leaving my job yeah because <laughs> if you have a past of, of mental health issues which i'm sure people are familiar with like when you got mental health issues it's incredibly hard to do a job yes uh it's when it gets so bad that it's debilitating you can't just turn up for work no no so i would understand why your parents might be like they were concerned. A depressing yeah. episode. They're like, oh What's no. I thought you were okay. Yeah. So what is your past with mental health kind of stuff? Do you have any like labels that you fall under? Um it's like a it's like a they come together. Okay. You've got one, there's another one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just collecting them like Pokemon. Yeah. Right I'm like, what's next? I'm so ready. Come yeah. at me. I'm <laughs> I'm over it at this point. Cause like I, I keep getting like TikToks for ADHD and autism don't even and i'm like i can't i can't do another one please no because i kept getting like bpd stuff and i just kept scrolling by i was like i'm gonna ignore it yeah i was like it's not for me i don't have that yeah and then obviously that fateful conversation with my psychiatrist happened where he's like (laughs) you have borderline personality disorder (laughs) and bipolar and i was like so the content was oh, for me. It makes sense now. Oh, TikTok knew me better. Yeah, but- so it's like, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to collect anymore. I don't. I'm think. done. My collection is full. But everyone keeps telling me to get an ADHD diagnosis. I've had people tell me that, <sighs> and my parents are like, "I'm sure there was something when you were a kid." I'm like, "Don't." <laughs> Don't, don't make me question it, please. I don't want to go to the doctors again. <laughs> it's expensive though. Yeah, like it is. It's kind of really hard to get 
for free here in the UK. Any diagnosis. To get seen by a psychiatrist in the UK? Good See, luck. I was really lucky that because... Well, no. I've got a really good doctor. Mm -hmm. But most of things happened when I was under 18. Oh, so should I take it more seriously? It was easier to get seen by someone, I think. Ah. Um, there's more effort put into child mental health than at all. Not like drastically. I can't say it was the best experience I've ever had. But um, no, Cam's is more... not great. <laughs> <laughs> I I lived with someone who traumatized who worked for Cam's. Oh no, uh, temporarily they didn't work there the whole time. And I I bit my tongue. I didn't yeah. want to say anything. It's I think we've all had a collectively pretty bad experience. Yeah, and I also I dated a girl who I'll just say was very close to someone very high up in how cams is run mm. and we were having dinner one day and she was telling me about it and like, she was yes. like oh they're very proud of how, all the progress they're making and that the money's go into the right areas of yes darling help. of course and i was like uh -huh. <laughs> sure is it now absolutely it's they're doing so good yeah yet everybody has the same experience yes like yeah i don't think i've ever met anyone with a I haven't met anyone with a positive no r review of cams. No, which um, is sad, but also it's just reality. It is the, but that's why people, you know, either don't go and see someone because yeah. if you can't afford to pay for it, and paying for it is expensive, Very so dear. expensive. That's why I always say it's a privilege to have a diagnosis in this country. It really is. Because, when people are like, "Don't yeah. self-diagnose," I'm like, "Well, some people, some people have to can't." You know, I waited ages to see a psychiatrist mm. for, like, my BPD. Mm. And it just, people can't do that. <laughs> it's, no. It, I get very annoyed at people getting angry at self-diagnosis. Yeah. For that exact reason. I got very lucky somebody because paid for my privilege. diagnosis. And if they didn't pay for my diagnosis, I still wouldn't have a diagnosis. Yeah, well, I was really lucky that I was, like, in the system already. Yeah. So you can sort of float around a bit. You get shimmied and shelved yeah. in the right places but, sometimes. you know, if someone's going for the first time... Oh, good luck. And even getting past the doctor in the first place is an issue for a lot of people. Like, it's just so many simple things. Like, I didn't understand that, like, my doctor prescribed me Prozac was the worst thing ever because of bi bipolar. It was horrendous. Yeah. I hated pro. Mm. I went mad on that. Yeah, I had not a good time. It was it was not a fun time. No. And I didn't know why and then when I found out that I had bipolar, I was like, "Oh, so it was sending me manic." Okay. It's, it's doing everything that the yeah. illness is already doing yeah. just 10 times worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like there's things that 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 I think make diagnosis important because like some people think that you don't need to get a diagnosis in this world and that's fine but there are certain times where like the likes of that where yeah taking an antidepressant is dangerous if you've mm -hmm. got bipolar and yeah how, you have to know you have bipolar to know it's dangerous because otherwise it. it's like well if I knew that in the first place and I wouldn't have taken that and I wouldn't have been as mental. crazy yeah <laughs> I don't know I think the whole world of, of mental health kind of stuff is it's complex. It's, it's really very complex. complex. And I find it very difficult. As somebody who speaks very openly about their mental health, too openly for that matter. But I don't think you can ever be too open about it. Well, I have no shame, so it's fine. I just like, joke. It's like, maybe you don't want the dark humor, but it's coming anyway. Yeah, honestly, that's my coping mechanism. And yeah. people, you just got to buckle up, bucko. <laughs> it's like, it's right. happening. Like, every, every party I've ever been to with you, I'm just cracking the worst yes. jokes. And I'm like... I'm with my people. It's fine. When people laugh along with me, I'm like, "This is it. I found you." Yeah, I'm meant to be. <laughs> that is the that is the thing about our friendship circle. <laughs> is there's a lot of dark yes. dark humor going but it's on. It's the best. It's the most supportive group of people I've ever met. It is, and I love them all to pieces. I feel like the people that have gone through the most are always the best people to be around. Because uh, they for get me it. as well. Like I think that um having like m the majority of my friends being sex workers i've noticed one common thread and that's that everybody who's done sex work tends to be the most open-minded people mm -hmm. in terms of most aspects of life yeah it like, doesn't matter what it is you know the it's... least judgmental people yeah i've ever met and I, I i knew from the moment i met everyone that i was like 
something's different I here. I like it. And I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, it was like the, yeah, just felt like I knew everybody. Yeah. And yeah. that I could say things about, say, mental health at a party. That no you one's never gonna... be able to say at a party, but people are just going to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, people are like, oh, like sex workers are so up themselves. And Do people say that? I've had people be like, oh, you think you're better than everyone else. No. No. I can't. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of every experience that I yeah. have. Have, have had people think you're like the worst people ever to exist because of what you do and which i would have said would have been more common yeah for people to have that mindset yeah because i've seen it i've witnessed people say it on the internet <laughs> yeah like i know those people exist they're like you're gonna be a horrible person and like you're disgusting and yada yada and it's like people no. can't see past no we are like well we <laughs> but like sex workers are some of the nicest people i've ever met definitely and I, I wish out a doubt. It, it's that's why I always find it so awful and hilarious simultaneously when I see those comments of like, yeah, I don't know, like when people say just mean stupid shit, like you're gonna burn in hell or whatever, and I'm like, okay. You're... I mean, I was going there before anyway, <laughs> but also it's like you're judging, you're throwing stones, you're doing absolutely well, that's everything. The thing. That... It's like we're in an industry that's so judged. So why would we be? judgmental of anyone else because we know exactly what it's like what it feels like yeah i mean i went on the x factor so yeah i can't judge anyone for their career choices no <laughs> i remember watching you on the x factor and being like she's got a nice cardigan <laughs> it's always the cardigan yeah i still have that cardigan <laughs> and anytime i wear a cardigan people make make it make it like oh that's a really that's it, a nice cardigan that's a nice cardigan i like your cardigan collection <laughs> and i'm like i don't have a massive collection of cardigans contrary to popular belief <laughs> just, but i appreciate it and yet you're wearing one now i am this is one of my favorites it's very nice it's soft it's it's quite old ladyish, but i appreciate it i can't do cardigans i feel too dainty too dainty too dainty <laughs> i mean how are you supposed to be like a powerful sub in a cardigan exactly <laughs> just imagining you trying to like be dominant whilst in an old lady cardigan i mean i could do it you you could own it inside yeah then it's, it's not what's there. on the outside no. that matters it's what's on the inside yeah exactly <laughs> but this has been so fun yes it's i been lovely just appreciate you so much for coming on being so honest so open and Always. just so funny. I just <laughs> I love you so much. And I hope you know that. I don't think I'm that funny. I think I just oh, laugh shush. at myself. <laughs> you are. You are. And you're just you're just great. And I just hope that everybody has enjoyed this conversation as much as I've enjoyed it. Because <laughs> I've had a ball. I've had a great time. It's been all over the place, but it's been great. So when it comes to your social media, yes. Where can we find you? So for the next week, you can probably yeah, yeah, find yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> before she gets banned again yeah yeah be quick be quick um so i'm on instagram mm -hmm. oh i've got so many different names she'll stick them i'll put somewhere. them in the description <laughs> i'll put them all in the description and you can follow but i've got instagram twitter tiktok you got reddit the only fan the only if that's fans. the kind of content you're into and i've got two other adult sites too oh, branching wow. out you're yeah branching out fair yeah. enough but people can find those links if they go to your page yes so yes. it'll be in a link if you tree. find any page everything's linked somehow okay well that's cool so people can go follow you <laughs> yes. on whatever platform they want yes <laughs> <laughs> amazing well guys thank you so so much for watching i hope you have a happy happy day and i'll see you later all right happy happy day <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> If you've made it this far, thank you so much for listening. If you have any guest suggestions, topic requests, or feedback, then hit me up in the YouTube comments. Don't forget to follow the podcast so you never miss an episode, or sign up to the Patreon for even more content. Have a happy day.